afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. Now, if you have not checked out my introduction to Civil Air Patrol, which was basically summarizing what Civil Air Patrol is with its missions, then I highly recommend you check out my other video, which is in the i card right here. I s submitted it, or I, I published it about a few days ago before publishing this one. So I just want you to make sure that you are fully aware of that. One small correction that I want to add to the video that I had from before. <gasps> Gasp! I'm, I didn't add something. I didn't add a piece of information. I said if you wanted to promote to Cadet Lieutenant Colonel that you're required to attend something called Regional Cadet Leadership School, which is one way to fulfill that requirement, but you're just essentially supposed to attend one of two options. There's something called Officer Cadet School or Cadet Officer School, it's COS, so it's Cadet Officer School or RCLS. The Cadet Officer School is an NCSA or National Cadet Special Activity and is highly competitive to get into, and there are a very limited number of slots. So RCLS is less competitive to get into and it's offered typically on the region level, which means it's more accessible to more cadets because it's closer to where they live in addition to it just being a program with people that they might be more familiar with or they might work with on a more frequent basis because they're just geographically located closer to each other. So both of those fulfill the requirements that you need in order to promote past Cadet Lieutenant Colonel or a two Cadet Lieutenant Colonel. So just wanted to make that small correction, put that out of the way before getting into this video. In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the core values. And I will also discuss a few differences between the cadet program and the senior member program. So let's get started with the core values. The core values are based off of the Air Force's core values, and it expands upon that by adding volunteer service and respect. So they are integrity, volunteer service, excellence in all we do, and respect. Now, Civil Air Patrol added the respect one because one, it's a volunteer organization, and we want to present ourselves really well. And since we are wearing the Air Force style uniform, we need to respect it as accordance to their regulations and those who have died wearing the uniform, we want to respect that and honor that. So that is one of the core values that was added on in addition to like service, excellence and integrity, which are the core values for the Air Force. Integrity is defined as doing the right thing when no one is watching. Um, that, that one is just kind of like, you are um, putting your best foot forward whether people are there to see what you're doing or not. So if you're living with integrity, like you wouldn't steal something if you just like see a wallet sitting in the street. If you have integrity, then you would probably like return that to the police station where it can get returned to its rightful owner. Or maybe even um, see if there's contact information in that wallet and return it to the owner. Um, someone without integrity might steal the money out of the wallet or like commit credit card fraud and steal credit card information, which is a very, very terrible thing to do. So that is the first core value. The next one is excellence in all we do. So excellence is just putting in the time, the effort, and the energy into something to make it the best possible product that you can produce or the best possible thing that you can do. For example, if you are writing an essay, the expectation is that you put in your best effort and this is like the epitome of your writing ability in order to show how good of a writer you are or in order to convince the audience of something. If you were writing an essay for some reason, like maybe you're writing an essay for school or maybe it's a requirement for a job or maybe you're writing a cover letter, if you don't write it with excellence, people can kind of tell and they will see that maybe either you aren't taking it seriously or you don't have the writing skills that they're looking for or it may just not be a good match between you and the company that you're applying for or you may not be fulfilling all the requirements of the speech. So that is another core value. Additionally, we have service or volunteer service with Civil Air Patrol. It's a volunteer-based organization. People don't get paid for the thousands of hours they do to serve. I have never been paid for like leading an encampment 
or volunteering to serve as an instructor or a seminar leader for summer activities. That, that doesn't happen. I'm doing it because I am inspired by the young people I get to work with and I used to be a cadet and so by getting a chance to work with others, I want to provide them with the opportunities that were provided to me and give them additional mentorship and support to help them reach their fullest potential. And so that, that is why I do it. And so I'm putting the needs of the squadron and the cadets before my own in order to further the, their education and training and just overall development. Um, most, most members in Civil Air Patrol join for a couple of reasons. One of them might be because it's a resume booster, and if you're applying to academies, then it looks good. It doesn't look good unless you've been in for over a year. Uh, if you join, like, JROTC or Civil Air Patrol late in your high school career to just boost up your resume, one, you won't get as much out of it, and two, like, they, they want to see time commitment to it. And if you just have it listed and then you don't have additional experience to back up what that, that Civil Air Patrol experience should be, then it won't help you at all and it might even damage your chances in getting into an academy because they'll be like, I mean, you've listed Civil Air Patrol, but what have you done with them? And then you may not have experience to back up what you have claimed. So some people join it for the resume boost. Some people join it for the opportunities like being able to do orientation rides, going on search and rescue missions. Even as a senior member, you can do something called air crew where you can take pictures of damage when you're like going to a location that might have seen some kind of damage on the ground. Like if there was a hurricane or an earthquake and there's even like mission scanner where you're looking out the window and mission observer where you're also looking out the window, but helping with something called the Becker system, which would look for an emergency locating transmitter or an ELT, which might be on a plane or on an individual person who's missing. So we always try to put the needs of others before our own, which is why we are so volunteer oriented. Now we are going to talk about the difference between being a cadet and being a senior member. Now a cadet, you can join as early as 12 years old. You are required to attend two meetings before you can actually submit your paperwork just to see what it's like and to get an idea of if you fit well with the squadron and if the squadron fits well for you. So it's just kind of to see how well you will do and if you are actually interested in what the squadron has to offer with those squadron meetings. Because the squadron meetings are the most frequent way you will interact with Civil Air Patrol. It's really mostly on that local level and then occasionally like at the group level, which is the next level, and then the wing level or the region or the national. So most of it is done on that small squadron scale. So just by the sheer fact that you will be interacting most at that squadron level, it's really important to see how well you guys work together. So that's one thing. And if you wanted to join and you are 11 currently, that's okay. If you wanted to attend a few months and be an active participant, you just have to have permission slips signed when you're doing activities and such. Like if you're doing the health and fitness activities, then you just have to have a permission slip signed by a parent and you should be fine. Um, just make sure you sign in the guest sign-in sheet when you're going to meetings so that they have your contact information. So I went to several meetings when I was 11 years old and I submitted paperwork when I turned 12. And I didn't actually get to be an official member until eight days later because they took eight days to process my paperwork and like have it mailed to them. So it does take a little bit of time. It doesn't take as long nowadays, but that was, that's because it was about 10 years ago. So you can join as soon as you turn 12. Now, I had mentioned in the last video, if you want to be a cadet, you have to join between the ages of 12 and 18. And there are a lot of opportunities available to cadets. So if you are interested in Civil Air Patrol, it's actually better to join it like when um, you are 13 to 15-ish, because that can really help with your leadership development. And there are a lot of opportunities that you can take advantage of before you graduate from high school. There are a lot of times where members join as a cadet and they're in for a couple of years. And then as soon as they graduate, they no longer want to be involved. And then later on, after they finish college and they're working, they might be like, hey, 
I am interested in coming back as a senior member, and then they'll jump back into the program that they they missed while they were in school. Um, I've heard from some people that they're going to college, they're doing Jer they're doing JROTC in high school, and they're going to go do ROTC in college, and they enjoyed Civil Air Patrol, but it's not for them after they graduate. It is possible to do both. Um, I personally did it for my freshman year of college. I did the Corps of Cadets and ROTC while also serving as the cadet commander for an encampment for Civil Air Patrol. And I attended meetings regularly at the squadron that was closest to my university. As a cadet lieutenant colonel, and after having been in Civil Air Patrol for like about seven years at that point, that experience was extremely helpful for them because I was a really senior experienced cadet and most of their cadets were very young. They didn't know how to wear their uniforms properly. They didn't have enough experience to teach classes about Civil Air Patrol content. So I was like, here is the experience that I have. And if you're interested, you're more than welcome to use me as a resource. I am here for you guys and I want to help you as much as I can. And so as that support to their squadron, they, they began to really thrive by getting a couple new interested members. And they were very small and they were, they were still a little small, but that's because members change over time. So um, I'm, I'm just happy that I was able to contribute to that squadron even though I was at college. So it is possible to balance them. It's just a matter of what are your priorities? What do you want to get out of Civil Air Patrol? And is there anything that you want to give back to the program? Like I received several awards within my ROTC unit, unit because they saw, saw how much leadership experience I had and how much I was giving back to not only Civil Air Patrol, but also the ROTC wing where I would help them with their training exercises or help coordinate squadron activities for, for the ROTC squadron that I was assigned to. And it was, it was a positive experience overall because I was sharing experience that I had from ROTC and Civil Air Patrol with a unit that really needed that support. So even if you do go to college, you can be active. And if you just want to become a senior member, that's cool too. However, there is something called IACE, which is the International Air Cadet Exchange. And if you remember, I had mentioned you have to be an Air Heart Cadet or a cadet captain in order to go to some countries and or go to different countries when IAS is happening and you have to be over a specific age in order to go across the ocean. So there is an exchange that goes to Canada and I believe the lowest age you can be is 16. Let me let me double check this. So you have to be over 17 years old in order to go to most of the countries involved with IAFs. So when I went, I was 18 and I, would, I had already, was I 18? No, I was older than 18. Was I? I don't remember, but I was definitely over the age requirement and I got to go to Belgium. So if you're an older cadet and you have been actively involved for several years through middle, middle school, through high school, or just through high school, that's perfectly fine. If you are an active member, and you promoted regularly and you're above Earhart, I highly recommend you apply for IAs. It was a fantastic experience, a wonderful two weeks in a different country. And the the whole two weeks is, it, it costs 1000. You can also get scholarships to help um, pay for part of the price. But normally a ticket to Belgium on its own is like 1,200. So just being able to have that kind of opportunity to go international was fantastic and we got to even fly in gliders and we never got to do that <laughs> where I live so I was like this is awesome and it, it was really fantastic so that is something to consider if you are in the age range that you feel like you're aging out of the program soon but you still want to take advantage of opportunities there's also flight scholarships as a cadet you can get flight scholarships which can be worth between like $500 to $2,000 or sometimes your full private pilot's license and that's through the Cadet Wings program which they recently created and they will help fund you to get your private pilot's license. They will help pay for your academics in college. 
they will help you or they will, they will help finance you through a lot of different opportunities as long as you take advantage of the applications and being like, here, I'm putting myself out there. I've been really active in Civil Air Patrol. And if you give to Civil Air Patrol, Civil Air Patrol will give back to you in experience and sometimes as like a financial assistance availability. Um, I got about six or seven thousand dollars worth from wing scholarships and national scholarships through Civil Air Patrol and that helped pay for 50 flight hours which basically got me most of the way there to my private pilot's license and it took me a little bit longer because of the many switches between volunteer instructors and I have my thoughts on that but it was definitely really really supportive of me and my endeavors to finish getting my license so CAP has really played a pivotal role in me being able to accomplish those kind of things. So those are opportunities that you can have as a cadet. As a senior member, you can attend any NCSA as a staff member. You can attend any encampment as a staff member. And typically, because it's volunteer-based, they're really in need of senior members. You can also teach classes about your personal experience as a senior member, or you can even learn about different specialty tracks, like there's I think 21 or 24 different specialty tracks, it's over 20 specialty tracks that you can choose, whether it be character development and chaplaincy, or maybe even health services, or historian, professional development. Wait, did I say professional development? No, I didn't. I said character development. Professional development's another one. Aerospace education, emergency services. There's a ton of them. And you get education and training through Civil Air Patrol in order to further your ability to understand and lead others, which I think is a really fantastic opportunity. So I don't want to make this video too long. But I just wanted to let you know of some of the opportunities within Civil Air Patrol a little bit more specifically on how you can take lots of opportunities within the program and get as much as you can out of it because you get what you put into it. So I put in a lot of time and effort, like by going to five different encampments and like going from being a, a student to being the cadet commander or helping with conferences and getting a chance to work with senior members across the wing and cadets across the wing. They're really rewarding experiences. So no matter what you do, no matter what you decide, Civil Air Patrol, is something available for you if you are interested in joining. So if you are interested, feel free to send me an email. Um, it's at redberrywheelbusiness at gmail.com. And I would be more than happy to chat more with you. And if you're planning on joining as a cadet, then I ask that you include a trusted family member on that email communication. And if you're planning on joining as a senior member, which is if you're joining between 18 and higher, then you can just send me an email directly. So that is everything I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. And that is all folks. Until next time. Toodles.